Okay. So I have te uh, technical difficulties putting things up on the screen for an adapter. So this is going to be very interactive <laughs> in uh, social network analysis. So I will suggest sites and searches to go to after I uh, get going and talking about social network analysis in general. How many people have used social network analysis on that? Okay. I want to ask just to get a couple of examples. So someone in the middle who raised their hand back there, who's done it? Who's used social network analysis? Okay, great. What did you use it for? Fire and interference complaints. So did you end up with something that connected the dots? Is that what you were doing? Okay. And what did you show? What were the relationships that you showed? I'm good. Mm -hmm. So this was connections between people or institutions? Profiles. Okay. And how they were interrelated. Any, anyone else? Another example. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So family members, associates, family members, connections. This was people, between people. Okay. One more example. Um, any, anyone else that's used it? Okay. Yes, back there. Pe people in crimes. Okay. Quick question. What software did you use? Oh my God, <laughs> that's a very effective piece of software. That's the one. That's the one I'm most familiar with. Oh my God, Jesus Christ! <laughs> yes, Gaffey. Okay. So in my world of social network analysis, there are two softwares, and you might go ahead and just if you're on your laptop or write them down. One is very associated with Microsoft Excel. It's called Node Excel. And if you can do a search here, I, and I'll send something out after this class since I can't you know, show you what's on here. So can everyone that's typing in find Node Excel? It's N-O-D-E-X-L. Okay, is that yes? People found it? Okay. So that is one of the simpler ones, I think. Um, it, both pieces of software take some time. The other is Gephi. And... Gephi is really pretty. <laughs> Gephi is like, you can make things look wonderful. Um, and somebody gets good at Gephi, that is a software for social network analysis. I think it's been much more popular in Europe. Gephi, G-E-P-H-I. And you should end up on a pretty site. <laughs> okay. G-E. PHI, is that right? We've got that? Okay. So this is probably as effective as, you know, showing it up there because then you look at it and then you forget it later. Now you've got it. Um, so those are the two that you really would think about learning. Um, Gephi is more, you know, open source, free uh, in general, and much easier to use um, in terms of you're not paying anybody and you're not locked in to one particular kind of software. There are others, okay? But I like to pick software that other people are using, other journalists, so I have my little informal group, okay? Now, um, once you know that, you can start to see lots of examples of um, social network analysis being used. It's been an interesting history of using this. Um, some people have dismissed it because they only do visuals. Uh, the, uh, it's being used by the International Consortium uh, of Investigative Journalists for Panama Papers, connections between business and so forth. You can see that kind of example. Um, but just by getting this software, you start to think about how do I picture things? How do I visualize things? Uh, I think the, it's most popular around 2010. 
if you look up a guy named Peter Algus, A-L-D-O-U-S, uh, I don't even think he's using it as much, but he did some very exciting stuff. Algus, A-L-D-O-U-S. Uh, he's at Berkeley, and he's done some great work. If you're looking for examples, and uh, again, you don't want to get into this unless you can see uh, the use of it. I'm kind of fascinated as journalists, we don't use it more, and that's why I wanted to do this class. I had somebody that was going to help me with it. They didn't show up. So um, uh, you're going to get one side. Yes. I'll just A L D O U S. You going to give it a try? Uh, no, no, no. no. It, you, you would look for Berkeley, UC Berkeley. Okay. Great. Yeah, let me. Yeah. Is that going up there? Let's see what I can do here. I'll come back to this. Let me finish my thought and then I'll do. But thank you so much. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's see. I may have it. Oh, that's fantastic. Okay. That's right, the member of parliament, right, Berkeley. You should come up here. Yeah. And he worked for BuzzFeed also at a particular time. I'll put him up there. Okay. See how he goes. Okay. He'll come up at some point, but now I want to go to something else here. I'm putting something up here. Hold on a second. Okay, now I can show you a few things. Um, has anyone ever heard of the International Network of Social Network Analysis? It's one of the funnier association uh, titles I know of. Um, one of the things we do as journalists is we go to other professions and borrow and steal from their particular methodology. So if you're getting a social network analysis, I would definitely yeah, let's see if we can get this here. I would definitely check out this particular site and this association. They have tutorials. Uh, is in journalism, we don't have that many tutorials on this. Um, and this would be my one-stop shopping to understand uh, what is really what this is can be powerful for. Naturally, their um, their magazine uh, or bulletin is called Connections. <laughs> because it's all about connections. Um, and I just have found this uh, incredibly valuable uh, because we don't do enough of this. The most we do with social network analysis, I think is a lot of visualization of connecting the dots, which is very helpful. The Washington Post does a lot of that. You can find the examples of it. Uh, but what I'm interested in social network analysis is there is actually in the software a function uh, looking at the kinds and strengths of ties and connections. You can actually, it actually runs statistics and numbers on how strong a connection is. So for example, uh, the visualizations you do can be such that say, let's take campaign contributions, you know, exchange of money in some way. If somebody gives a lot of money, that's a stronger tie, right? And so we can go way past just connecting the dots that this is a family member of so-and-so and so-and-so, -and -so, we can really look at the strength of the relationships. Um, so I want to mention that one too. Let me get this going. I want to show you another one. Yes. Let's hope this comes up. This is a classic example that's been around for a while and I hope they've kept it alive. 
it, it comes and goes now. There was this, uh, and we'll see if it shows up. Um, there was a, a great inspiring little nonprofit project done a number of years ago, a couple of decades ago, and it was called They Rule. And the nonprofit that worked on this basically, let's see if I can find one. Let's do this. This would be fun. They basically looked at 100 of the largest companies in the United States and looked at the interlocking board of directors. And I thought that would make social network analysis really take off in journalism. It didn't. Uh, um, but it was startling good in terms of being able to move around and see connections in companies. So it was uh, interlocking board of directors, somebody who's on one company's board of directors and yet on another company. And, uh, and they put this out in a way that you could really explore these connections. So let's see if it'll work now. There's not any other boards. Let's go let's see if we can get one here. It turns out they're kind of, I'm going to have to select another one. Where are they? There we go. So you start to have these sort of like flowers blooming of connections. So you can see that one person sitting on the Amazon board here is on the Pepsi-Cola, and then you start expanding from there. And I'm trying to find uh, one person that would like be on lots of boards. But anyway, I like this example because it gives you the idea of how you can basically explore connections to connections and overlapping and so forth. It also is a good example at thinking about connections uh, between things and how um, significant they are. Does anybody sit on a board? Is anybody on a board? I'm on a bunch of boards. Uh, you can sit on a board and kind of be a, a rock and do nothing. Okay, <laughs> that's you know, you're on a board. Uh, but you can be an officer of a board. And one thing I wish they had done with this particular one is identify with color or something when somebody's an officer, because a treasurer and a president are the really active people. Um, but this is good enough to like start thinking about how things are interconnected and who sends, but it's not giving you a really good idea of strength. Let me see, Phil, oh, there we go. So anyway, I love this example because it got me thinking. It was one of the first things I saw that really got me thinking. A second example um, I saw was a piece of work that was done on the terrorist cells of 9-11. And I don't know if anyone has seen that. It was actually done by a business consultant. And basically, he did a diagram. I may be able to find it, maybe not. Uh, he did a diagram of the terrorist cells for each plane. And he built it all, he built it all out of um, open sourcing. And so you could actually see who was important in that network of cells and who was isolated. So that's another thing you can do. And there are um, three principles when you look at social network analysis that I learned that made things more fascinating. And they all have to do with something called centrality. And that's when you look at a network is you try to identify the importance of a person in it by measuring certain kinds of centrality. Um, one centrality is called closeness, which is actually counterintuitive. That means how close or how far are you from the center of a network. So if you're thinking about it like in sociological terms, um, say, uh, group of immigrants that have come to a community would have a very uh, low degree of closeness because they're sitting out, they've been isolated, they maybe have one or two contacts with the community network. Does that make sense, what I'm saying there? So if you saw one person here, way out here, and they only had one connection into the board of all this board of director stuff, they would not have a very high degree of closeness to what's going on. So that helped me think about, well, okay, so if you don't have a lot of closeness, you don't have a lot of power. You know, you can extrapolate from that. 
Um, another one is actually centrality, and that's like you're the person sitting in the network with the most connections that are uh, in that whole network. You have a high degree of centrality. The one that I'm most interested in when I look at networks is something, and these are the actual words they use, is betweenness. And I thought that was an odd word at first, and then I finally got it. A between, having a high degree of betweenness is sort of like being the gatekeeper. You can't get from one island over here of the network to this other island without going through this particular person. They're like a gatekeeper. They connect different groups. They don't necessarily have a lot of connections, but you can't get from one group to the other group without going through this person. Again, I'm just exploring the principles. If you start to, if you start to really read this stuff, and is anyone working in an office now? Have you gone back to an office or whatever? If you start using this and reading this stuff, you start looking at your office a totally different way. <laughs> It's like, who knows everybody and knows everything, you know, and that's centrality. And I can't get to the boss unless I go through this person. Ooh, that's between us. <laughs> and that person sits way off in the corner, and that's like really low degree of closeness. <laughs> uh, you just start seeing everything in different ways. But those are really important in terms of power, control, and who's running things. Um, let's see if I can get boss Krebs. Uh, you can do this yourself. There is a guy, I uh, hope I put his name up right. Not bad, Amir. <laughs> he has a high degree of centrality, but also a very high, low degree of closeness. Uh, let's do it. Yes. I think I had a Krebs. Oops. And do Vos Krebs, terrorist. Let's see, he put out a lot of different stuff, and what I'm looking for is has the pretty illustrations. Okay, so this is a real-time use by a non-journalist of open sourcing to figure out who were the terrorists that were on the planes of 9-11 and how they were connected. So he's using open sourcing. And here we go. It's too bad, this, um, this one doesn't have the colors uh, because he color coded it too. Can you see this or call it up on your screen? So, I love this and he uses the terms too. There are a couple of things. Calculations are done within the software of shortcuts with shortcuts. He's looking at connections, strength of connections and so forth. So this paper is like a tutorial. It's really nice in using social network analysis. It also, and try to get the paper that has the colors <laughs> on it, but here we have a network. So can everyone see the, the terrorists that had a high degree of betweenness now that I've talked about it? That's a high degree of betweenness. Can you see up here what I'm poking at? If I want to get over to this group, I have to go through this guy. They're all dead, but you know, when they were alive, <laughs> okay? And then if you go into the middle of this, you're gonna start seeing a high degree of centrality. And then you're gonna see this, I call it low degree, they may call it high degree. Now you're seeing sort of a lack of closeness if you're going down to this whole way. And again, that becomes a way of thinking. And like I said, be careful, you'll start seeing everything <laughs> in these patterns. Um, but this is a fascinating paper. I highly recommend taking a look at whichever one he's worked on. It's Vladis Krebs. It's V-L-A-D-I-S-K-R-E-B-S. Uh, just put in terrorist cells. I'll, I'll give you the name of the paper. Mapping Networks of Terrorist Cells. Okay, but he wrote he wrote other stuff about it. Yeah. Oh, you did. Okay, great, great. <laughs> Arcnet. Okay. We'll see if I can get back to that one. 
Uh-oh. Let's go back this way. Yeah, first Monday, I think, was a good one. Yeah. There we go. There we go. Pretty, 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 yeah. <laughs> color helps. So he grouped them by the flights they were on in terms of colors. Made it a lot easier to see there. And again, read the paper and you start to see like how you could apply this to other things you're looking at. Certainly, social network analysis is being applied to uh, things like the Panama Papers, you know, when you're looking through what connections, you know, um, you know, you have one agent on one uh, Caribbean island that has registered 50 businesses, that kind of thing it really helps with. Um, you might go ahead, I don't want to fumble around right now, but you might go Washington Post, I think it's Donald Trump Corporations, <laughs> because he had so many they realize in doing the story. See, has anyone found it? Most web of corporations. See if that one comes up. If it doesn't, I'll I'll find it and send it out to you guys. There we go. Yeah, there we go. Let's see if they'll let me have it for free. There we go. All right. Rock and roll. <laughs> LLC after LLC, limited liability company after liability company and corporations and da da da. So if you were going to investigate Donald Trump's business interest, um, you really need a map like this to get going and to decide which one you might want to really look at, or it can be a nice index. Okay, so this isn't necessarily the end of any investigation, but at least you've mapped out the connections and all the different companies that could be there. Um, so this is one of another one of my favorite ones. And they explain what they do. Almost anyone who uses social network analysis needs to really explain what the heck they just did. Okay. Um, when I started working on it, um, one of the coder journalists I was working with saying, you've got to be very careful about the hairball because in this world, everything's connected to everything and you just get this mass. So one, that brings me to one other thing that social network analysis can do is you have a filtering element of it. So if you get a whole mass of different connections and so forth, you can decide, I only want to see things that are connected to five other things, or 10 other things, or 20. And suddenly, this mass of stuff becomes more focused. So you can decide to focus into an area with the software. Does that make sense on this? OK. Um, so it's a different way of thinking. It's a different process of software. Um, and I, I, I'm just trying to show you places that you could apply it. Are there any questions at, at this point? Yeah, and one of the disappointing searches I have, yours may be better because we all have our own bubbles of searching, right? Um, is if you try and try this right now, social network analysis journalism. And it depends on the year and the, how I'm searching, and the keywords can change. I'll do it today and see what kinds of things might pop up. There was actually, for a little while, a nonprofit group of journalists who were loaning themselves out for small fees to do social network analysis for other new, for news operations. It didn't last that long. Yes? Yeah. I'm not doing a hands-on training in that, but I can point you to tutorials. Yeah, I, if I did it, we'd probably have to do like two classes to get going because the way that you line it up in a particular grid is not intuitive like in Excel. But there are great tutorials at both of those places. But I, I was gonna try to do the hands-on, and when I saw the number of people signed up, I 
that plan went dead. <laughs> so, um, yeah, yeah. Again, there are two groups of this kind of software. One is for visualization, and one is for visualization and analysis. In other words, there are there's software that has a part that it will, if you just input stuff, it will connect it and make some of those beautiful little diagrams, maps, pictures. What you want to get into, if you can, is start to understand the software, use the software that analyzes the strength of those connections or the potential importance of those connections. So if you, there's easier stuff to use if you just want to do the diagram, which is really valid. You know, we use geographic maps because they tell a story like immediately with very few words. Um, and so the ones that draw for you, um, that's worth getting into. But I'm encouraging people to read a little bit more because the more you can tell about the strength or number of contacts, it tells you more about how that network is working or not working and who's being left out and who's being let in. So anyway, there's and the drawing software is easier than Gephi or Node Excel. So, um, well, Node Excel, because it's uh, now it can be a component of Excel, makes it easier to take data out of spreadsheets and put it in. So that would be one way you would do the data. Um, there are number, so in other words, you would import Excel data into Node Excel, and it would not start to draw nice connections and things. Again, you have to understand how the data has to be arranged. It's a different way of arranging the data. It's not impossible. Obviously, a lot of people are using it. There are lots of tutorials. Um, you just got to try it yourself. All I'm trying to do in this class is just expose you to the stuff that's out there and to expose you to the way of thinking and of the use of the uses it's been put to. Okay, does that make sense? Mm hmm Yeah. Yeah. Yes, well, I'm talking about the visualization and the principles behind looking at those visualizations and also telling you that you can get software that will help you determine the strength of those connections. The other part is if you look at Volatis Krebs, he inputted the data. And to me, that can be kind of exciting. It's open source. He basically read news articles, reports, investigations of 9-11, and he set it up and put it in. The uh, popular software before all this was something called UCI-Net, also uh, known as UCI, I, I Will Crash. Uh, and that's why it didn't get more popular. It was free software that just crashed periodically on you for no good reason. So that's why people use Gephi. That's why they're using no Excel. OK. Questions? Thoughts on this? OK. Go to this one. And hopefully, they haven't buried this, but who knows? I never know what's gone behind a firewall now. Mm, let's see if we can get this one. I'll give it one try here. Probably not going to find it. So anyway. Uh, Ken C. Starr has kind of buried this behind a paywall. But I had a graduate student who's now working at Reuters, and she was getting a degree in journalism sociology, and she wasn't sure she wanted to continue with journalism. And I said, well, there's this social network analysis stuff that sociologists use all the time, so maybe see if you can apply it to something. And she was fascinated by the fact that Osama bin Laden's satellite phone was purchased in Columbia, Missouri, 
where I was at the time at the University of Missouri. And how the heck did he get a satellite phone that was purchased in Columbia, Missouri? And she ended up doing social network analysis, showing all the connections it took, and through a Dallas charity, et cetera, et cetera, so you could, they could get a satellite phone to him purchased in Columbia, Missouri. And it was a fascinating article, and it, it blew people's mind. Another student worked on it, and a good investigative report at the Kansas City Star, and it kind of blew everyone's mind. Uh, so if you start thinking about how you can apply this, it's, uh, you can do local stories that turn into global stories. That was like one of the more fascinating ones. But they buried that. I just see if it's any. I'll put in one last thing. There we go. Who knows if we can get this or not? <laughs> Another payroll. Yeah. It's coming down. Give me a second. Now, for a while, we were writing about this a lot. Let's see if we can get it. Showing this to you. I'd love to show this, but I'm not sure we're going to get it. In any case, there's an article in the IRE Journal in which that's in. And while, ah, oh, there we go. And it was illustrated in a different way. Um, the graphics department of the Kansas City Star did not want to use like a typical social network analysis drawing, so they did their own. But that was basically used to track uh, and they like to have a lot of annotation. You can't read it on this, but that was basically tracking how the phone got into Pakistan. Pretty amazing. So, other questions, suggestions? Has anyone has anyone seen any social network analysis stuff in journalism that you like? Did anyone see any when you did the search? Any, who did the search? Social network analysis journalism. Did you get anything? Yeah. Any examples that look good? Back, yeah, back there. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah. So one other thing I want to point out is there is a, uh, a great project done uh, by a Korean journalist. And again, we should be using social network analysis on social media more <laughs> because, of course, it's connections. And they did, KBS did an incredible job. They looked at 900 million tweets and found that 13 accounts showed activity during this time. And basically, they were showing how uh, South Korea intelligence forces were meddling in the, the elections. Um, and they have a couple of dynamic uh, YouTube things they did. But I also wanted to note that um, this has been used effectively in uh, South Korea, uh, social network analysis on analyzing social media and being able to pluck out and show uh, how those 13 accounts were connected and what they were doing and what their content was on. So, um, what else do we have here? I only plan to go about an hour, so um, I'm open to questions now. Again, I'm just trying to give you the best overview I can. 
how it's applied, how we can think about it, and that you can go more than just making nice, pretty drawings. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, the, the pitfalls I found were exactly all those that we find in, in data, in doing any data software, which is you have to do an integrity check, which means you're only as good as the data that you put into this. So you've got to make sure that you've got as accurate data as you have. Um, I would, when I haven't done anything and I wouldn't do anything without running it by somebody that does social network analysis all the time to say, and then the third thing is trying to make sure to translate this language like we always do. So the pitfall is that you get caught up in the social network analysis lingo and no one knows what you're talking about. But if you say on the terrorist cell thing, I think Krebs was very clear, you know, that this was an isolated cell group and their only connection into the, to the general plan was through this one guy. Um, and, and, and so he put it in really common terms. So did Jamie Dowdle when she did the uh, Bin Laden. Uh, so. One of the other things, I think the last thing I want to talk about is we shouldn't be the profession not using this, okay? This is widely used if you go to the Social Network Analysis Association. Um, when I showed you the Bin Laden thing, does anyone work with counter-terrorist? Counter-terrorist or organizations are using this all the time. If you want to be brutal about this, let's see if we can get there. If you look at it from a counterterrorism standpoint, you're deciding who you're going to take out. It's that blunt. I mean, they're using it all the time. I mean, this is a primitive one <laughs> because they're getting so much information. If you talk to business consultants, like Velatis Krebs, I think he makes it, he was making a ton of money uh, going into companies who are trying to figure out who should secede whom. Um, a different business consultant I listened to on this was that they were brought in uh, to a very expensive corporation that had 30 really valuable people stretched around the world. This is for a pandemic and the leader was going out on maternity leave and it was gonna be a full year that she was gonna be gone. And they said, this is an important appointment we have to make. Will you take a look at the communications in our office, how people communicate, who knows whom, who's in touch with whom? And these are our two leading candidates. And you know, figure out how they work with others. Do they talk to everyone, are they connected? And they were actually doing social network analysis on this. And what they found is that no one talked to their two leading candidates. They actually were two of the most disliked people in the office. And they said they found this other person in the corner of the network, I think her name was Debbie, who knew everybody and knew everything and was the right person. And that's who they appointed and they had a successful thing. So it's being business consultants, counter-terrorists. Um, you're going to run into people, sociologists use it all the time to understand society. Um, if you're looking at disenfranchised groups, uh, impoverished groups, you're probably going to find somebody that social network analysis on it. So it, even if you don't use it, it's out there. It's really useful to us. And they will give you, as um, she would have been mentioned, they'll give you you know, data and drawings, and it will improve your reporting. Uh, so even if you don't get into it, if you look at that association, it's amazing. I think I am probably the only journalist that ever went to their, their international convention. It was really cool. I was the only journalist, and they didn't really know it. I'm just walking into all these different um, panels. Uh, there was one that was looking at heroin use in a U.S. city. They were using social network analysis to track who were the dealers and who weren't the dealers. It wasn't law enforcement, it was rehab centers. And then I ran to the other panel with the business consultants talking about the company that was going to, you know, um, promote the wrong person. And then 
I went to another one that was looking at environmental issues and polluters. So it was just, it was like shopping for ideas. Uh, so if you ever get a chance, if there's a possibility of going to it, you'll end up with like 10 years worth of stories and in, in investigations. The other thing about those guys is they really like to party. Like their destinations were like New Orleans and like Mexico Resort. <laughs> and yeah, they were like, um, so it's not a bad thing to go to. But again, know it's out there. Know everybody else is using it. And there are a lot of uses we could, we could put it to. So I hope this helps, that you just see this stuff and, and know it's there. I mean, we're great at mapping geography now. You know, we'd maps and satellites, and we're doing that all the time. But we're always connecting the dots between people, and we don't even illustrate it for ourselves. And so, you know, why not visualize that, too? So any other questions or whatever? Like I said, this is like between a lightning talk and a, <laughs> you know, and a regular seminar. Um, yeah. I... You know, the one thing about this is like early software, like I'm really into database managers and they were like, made my head hurt until they got really simple. Um, so I think you need to know, think how far you're going to it. I think Node Excel, if you have Microsoft Excel, is a pretty good one to go for. And there are tutorials, there's an institute that teaches it and teaches it online. So I go there. If I don't, have, if I'm using Google Sheets and things like that, I just throw in the towel and go for the big one. Go for Gephi. You know, that's what I do. Yeah. Yes, yeah, frequency of interaction could be one. I mean, that's, you know, that's like measuring radio waves in a way, right? So frequency of contact um, and the, uh, the connections themselves, the three principles I gave you, is a measure of strength. If you're well, I mean, think of the phrases we use that have kind of come out of this social network analysis that started in, I think it was the 1940s, you know, somebody's well connected or six degrees of separation. Six degrees of separation really came from a social um, postal experiment done in the US, like trying to figure how people were connected and did this random sample. And there's this, like everyone's like at most six degrees away from somebody else. Uh, and it'll be, so it, it's permeated our language, but we really haven't thought about it in the way, you know, and connecting the dots and so forth. Um, but again, frequency, uh, numbers of contacts, and then that other part I like. You don't have a whole lot of contacts, but nobody can get to the other side unless they go through you. And it's like some Monty Python skit. So, um, so they're just different. Once you start reading about, oh, okay, that would be measure. I've seen the uh, political contributions. I've seen that used several times. Somebody's given 5,000 stronger connection, supposedly. You know, and even you know, campaigns do that. 5,000 bucks gets you a photograph of the candidate signed. You know, $25,000, you can go to the reception. $50,000, you can shake their hand. You know, and 100,000, you can have a 15 minute conversation. So when I'm thinking of social network, and I'm thinking, okay, that would be a good way to, to do that. So anything else? On that? Okay, so hopefully in a couple of years we'll do a couple of hands-on classes, but like I said, it might be where you have to do three hours before the conference starts because it's not, and hopefully it'll just get easier. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the IRE Journal, uh, if you email me and you're interested in that one, I can probably pull up the story, pay the Kansas City Star $5, and finally get access. Yeah. They, they, you know, that's the way newspapers are staying alive right now, through their archives and charging us. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, let me know. If, you, if anyone really wants to see it or is interested in following up questions, 
grant.houston at gmail.com is what I use when I do conferences. So, and what does that tell you? Early adopter. There's no number on mine, right? <laughs> We're starting to read the tea leaves, right, of email and tweets. Okay, thanks very much. Um, and uh, let me know if you get into it. <laughs> okay.